guys, welcome back to another episode of Luis Guitaris. My name is Mark Lang, we're here at Different Taxes, and today we're going to be talking about this beauty, which is the Glen Ronan Grand Jewel 25 year old whiskey. This is a proper Harlan single malt whiskey, started in 1826. Three years after they actually Scottish, Scottish uh, or the UK allowed to uh, started giving distilling license, which it was in 1823, and this distillery is actually the second distillery in Scotland to actually get a proper distilling license. Now. Glen Ronick has a little bit of a history, colorful history. Started with Aladis in uh, the 1826, and the story goes on what you can find on the on the internet, which is actually funny, quite funny, is that after producing his whiskey, uh, and at that time uh, there was no regulation on how old you can age this whiskey, so he was pretty happy with the whiskey that he did. He put it in a barrel and he went to Edinburgh. Uh, after a couple of days of just trying to sell the whiskey, he found itself not. Uh, selling any because apparently everybody already bought the whiskey for the season or they weren't interested it was brand new nobody knew about the distillery and so on and so on so he decided to go back to his hotel but on the way there he found two ladies of the night uh, apparently the story goes that uh, the girls wanted to take him for a drink but he said that he already had whiskey so he took the two girls uh, to his hotel and they were all drinking uh, his whiskey now, the, 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 last, the next couple of days, those two girls told the story to the rest of the town, and so, uh, sooner than later, than later uh, there was basically a lot of women out there with a bottle of whiskey and just giving the whiskey to, to the patrons. Um, it's a very colorful story, and I find it quite interesting as well. Regardless of if it's true or not, uh, Glen Ronick eventually became quite popular. Uh, obviously, in around 2004, uh, it got purchased, uh, sorry, uh, this is another interesting fact, until 1960s, uh, the Grant family from William Grants from Glen Friedrich owned uh, Glen Ronick. And then it actually got sold over again, and then in 2004, uh, got taken over by Pernod Ricard. Uh, and then in, uh, later in 2016, the Ben Ryak comp- sorry, in 2016, uh, Brown Foreman purchased it, uh, and also they purchased Ben Ryak and Glen Gasso. Benrag, Glenronach and Glengoso are all part of Brown Foreman nowadays, which is great for, in my personal opinion. Uh, it means that they inject a lot of cash. Uh, I actually been to the Glenronach distillery itself. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful site. They have a castle on site uh, that you can stay in, uh, and then the distillery is literally next to it. Um, at the moment, they have four uh, copper pot stills uh, and the whiskies themselves, they are mainly aged in sherry casks. Uh, they do Oloroso, Pedro Jimenez, uh, and then different uh, Fino and, and so on and so on. Uh, this one is Oloroso Sherry. Uh, this is batch number eight, by the way. So each year or every couple of years, whenever the stock runs out, they do another uh, another batch. I believe by now they're in batch number 10. Uh, this one is bottled 406 out of 1505. And the beauty about this one as well, that they all get bottled like cast strength. This is 50.3% ABV. Now there is a lot of uh, Glenronic, that's a lot of single bottlings. We have reviewed one of them. Uh, and I love that about Glenronic. The fact that they do, like it's almost like a vintage uh, bottling that they do. So you got like 1992, 1993, 1994, 1999 and so on and so on. But this one is part of the core range. So the core range starts with the eight, then you They've got the 12, uh, they do a 10 as well, then do a 12, 15, 18, 21, uh, and then we go to 25. There is a 30 and there's a 40 as well, like many of these whiskies have. Uh, so, without further ado, let's just gonna try on this one. As you can see as well, we did another review as well on this one that it was for the Kingsman, uh, Kingsman release, uh, and it's a very, very similar bottle. I'm actually pretty sure it's the same, same packaging. Uh, but you can see the color is absolutely stunning. It's like dark chocolate. Uh, and what you're gonna get with this sherry, because I have tried this before, oh, you can smell it already. Not only the bitter chocolates, but almost like almost like a like um, strawberries and um, strawberry and chocolate basically. Uh, there's a lot of dried dates and dried fruits as well, like a like a sherry bomb would be. Um, this is absolutely stunning. <sighs> Oof. Yes, you can drink this all day. 51% ABV as well. It's just so strong, but at the same time, this is really, really smooth. You wouldn't think that this was that strong. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's an incredible whiskey. They do run out very quickly as well. 
I don't think the zero, uh, the the batch number eight is available anymore. Um, so you can definitely get the ten, the batch number ten. So hopefully you enjoy these ones, guys. Uh, please let us know if you want any whiskeys or anything like that reviewed in particular. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Slanjiba. So